Alrighty, everybody. We have indeed made it to technically what is considered week 15, but this week is the last regular season game. We know what this game is, the Army-Navy game. Coupled with that is the final eight teams that have made it. Yes, those FCS quarterfinals as well. Along with some other things, some more coaching news has come. We know the Heisman finalists, um, and everything is set before bowl week, rather the bowl week start. <laughs> So, um, why don't we get into it? Why don't we get started with the coaching changes and stuff like that first? First things first, Brett Benables. He has left Clemson to become Oklahoma's new head coach. Um, kind of surprising in all honesty. You know, I just, I just didn't think it'd be a thing, but here we are. It is a thing that is happening. And, you know, um, Benables is, you know, that type of guy that can you know, coach a damn good defense, so, you know, Oklahoma's steadily improving their defense over the past few years, and I think they'll continue to get, I don't know if Benable, if Benables is going to call plays himself or what, because, I mean, dude, dude knows how to put, put defense on the field, so, you know, what, we'll see what happens there. Um, and then a messy, messy coaching search out in Miami, the Hurricanes, you know, decided to bring on over Mario Cristobal from Oregon. So now Oregon has to find a new head coach. Manny Diaz gets fired. You know, I think he was, like, recruiting during the weekend. And, you know, I mean, things have been very, very messy. You know, Miami is trying to find a new athletic director. I mean, things are just getting completely wild. But for, forget about all that. The, the, the main thing is, is that Manny Diaz is fired. And Mario Cristobal is now the head coach of Miami. Uh, we'll see how it works out. We know how this Oregon team has operated over the past few years, which is underachieving. You know, so we'll see if the same thing happens here at Miami. I genuinely don't know what's going to happen. You know, because next year Miami really doesn't have a difficult schedule because they announced the rest of their schedule today as well. So. And by the way, I'm recording this on a late Monday night, so um, yeah. Um, so Miami's schedule in 2022 isn't going to be very difficult, except for Texas A&M. So we'll see what that does. But we're not going to talk about 2022 right now. We're talking about the rest of these games for 2021 at this moment. Um, so these two coaching hires, very, very interesting. I don't know how they're going to pan out. I really have no true opinions on these hires because I mean it's just kind of eh I guess you know this is the best that these two teams could do at the time so uh whatever man what about the Heisman the Heisman trophy has announced their candidates that are going up to New York on December the 11th so that night I assume you know They'll be at the. I assume these guys will be at the Army Navy game because I mean they, CBS guys like to interview the Heisman guys. They have done that in the past, so they probably might interview those guys. It depends. But the Heisman candidates that are coming to New York include Pittsburgh quarterback, the the man who faked out a lot of people on Saturday nights, Kenny Pickett, Alabama quarterback Bryce Young who also had a highest but defining moment against Georgia, C.J. Stroud, who, again, probably doesn't deserve to be there, and Aiden Hutchinson, who we've really on, who on this channel and a lot of other circles as well, we've really only talked about him the last three weeks, so obviously the Heisman recency bias is there. Unfortunately, we... We got some snubs. It's rather unfortunate that I would not have had Aiden Hutchinson, Bryce Young, or C.J. Stroud going to New York. If it were me, I would have had these guys, the snubs, Kenneth Walker, Will Anderson, and Matt Corral. I would have had all these guys going with Kenny Pickett to New York. I just don't care. 
fair for Bryce Young or C.J. Stroud because there are better players around them that probably should be going to New York, in honesty. But their their quarterbacks, it's a quarterback-centric award as it has been for a while now. You know, again, Aiden Hutchinson, I have no qualms about it, but I mean. We have been talking about him all season, have we? We've been talking about Will Anderson all season long, I swear. On this channel, we've definitely been talking about Will Anderson all season long because Alabama's played in many, many big games in which they've struggled all season long. So it was never about it was never about Bryce Young. We knew Bryce Young could put up stats. It was about this defense and what Will Anderson could do, which is just I mean, it's just asinine how the recency bias and the way the highest been trophy voting is set up, you know, the voters got to get a little bit better than this. This is this is really really bad. Like Stroud, <laughs> so Bryce Young, I can kind of understand, but I just don't want him up there. I'd rather have Matt Corral, Kenny Pickett. I mean, those two guys are way more exciting, way more dynamic than what Bryce Young has been doing. Way more dynamic than C.J. Stroud too. Like I just scoff and just completely ignore C.J. Stroud's stats. Oh, I, I, that's what I've been doing all season long. Just completely ignore it because he has those he has those trio of wide receivers around him. I just don't care, man. But it is what it is. I don't care anymore. You know, whoever wins the highest is going to win the highest. We'll talk about all this on our recap, which will be Saturday night. You know, so... We'll talk about who wants the highest, but we'll talk about these FCS quarterfinals. Let's get into them right now for our preview of the FCS quarterfinals. And what we have here are these four very, very intriguing games. Um, all the favorites from the second round advanced. I know. There's no. A lot of people are talking, still talking, and moaning and crying about college football playoff expansion at the FBS level. Well, looky here. Almost all the teams that were favored in the FCS are continuing to, you know, there, there's no, there's really no parity in the FCS in all honesty either. But it is what it is. I'm just gonna state my case. Uh, but let's let's talk about these quarterfinals. And the first one is on. Friday night, it will be nationally televised, and that is Montana taking on James Madison. And this could be JMU's final home game in the FCS. Remember, they're moving up to the Sun Belt, and it might be 2022. Um, there's been, again, there, I think we talked about this during conference championship weekend, that there might be some rumors. Uh, if not, I'll talk about it now. There might be some rumors that Marshall... Old Dominion and Southern Miss might be trying to go up to the Sun Belt a year early in 2022. So it, it, this could this could be it for JMU right here. Their final home game as a member of the FCS. It could be it. So Kurt Signetti's crew, they're looking to close in on the semifinals. And this is going to be a great QB battle between Cole Johnson, who has, what, 37 touchdowns, only like two picks, and Cam Humphrey. This is going to be a show. Going to be a damn good show. Let's not forget about a physical, physical safety in Bobby Hawk. You know, he, he's not the greatest safety in the world for the Grizz, but I mean, you know, what I do know is that this man is a pretty physical guy. He, he can play. And the Dukes have, you know, they have plenty of guys on their defense. I'll highlight Mike Green. He's a pretty interesting, you know, character on this Duke's defense. I believe he's like, what, a defensive end or something like that? Either a defensive end or a linebacker? You know. Um, it's a, but JBU's defense has been playing lights out all year long, so you know, it is what it is there. Um, the morning Saturday game that will be televised on ESPN is of course it's going to be North Dakota State. They're taking on East Tennessee State and we're wondering if Tyler Riddell can have another magical game like he did against Kennesaw State. Or will this North Dakota State Bison running game? Tamarick Williams has been getting it done for the Bison. I'm kind of wondering about Cam Miller's play because, I mean, you know, I mean, we know the Bison can run, but can Cam Miller throw it? He really didn't do too much in their second round game. And, I mean, I, I've really, you know, I'm just really not particularly impressed, you know, 
with him. I, I know, I know, it's probably some accusations there, but you know, uh, I'm just, uh, I'm, he, uh, all, I don't, I don't know. Bison, Bison fans really have been sounding off about him, at least in my opinion. You know, like they did with Trey Lance or, or you know, guys like that. You know, they, they really haven't been sounding off about how talented Cam Miller is. I, mean, I, I know he's pretty talented, but I mean, I just want to see him do some more stuff. If that makes any sense, and we know this Bison defense is going to be physical, tough, crazy out there on the field. But can the Buccaneers offense get it done? Can they? Can they? We know they can hang. Can, can they hang it up on the Bison defense? Can they put a rack of Bison ribs out on the cooker, you know, and cook them up? And let's talk about slinging that ball all over the field. Can, will we see that? Who knows? We'll find out on Saturday. South Dakota State is going to Villanova. It's an early afternoon game. I presume it's because Villanova doesn't do a lot of night games and stuff like that or anything. So that's probably why this game is so early. So the strong Jacks running game with Pierre Strong, you know, they're looking to they're looking to put the Wildcats away. You know, a lot of people are kind of doubting the Wildcats, and I, you know, I'd uh, I, I, I'd be another guy to, to say, yeah, I'm kind of doubting them a little bit. But at the same time, this is a Wildcats defense that we know can play. We know this defense is a damn good one. Forrest Ryan is one of the guys that leads this Nova unit on defense. And it's a physical and stingy one. They're not going to back down easy. They're not going to let the Jacks run all over them, you know, and stuff like that. They're going to they're gonna, they're gonna do something. They're going to do something, you know, out there. Oh, they can play night games. They just didn't choose to play a night game. I'm looking at their schedule right now, you know, just, just to have a good reference here. So I'm like, wait, why is this game at 2 o'clock on ESPN Plus? Why aren't they? It, it, I'll just say this again, man. Like, why aren't the whole quarterfinals televised? This does not make any sense. Put the entire quarterfinals on TV. ESPN News has events, but I don't see it. I don't see a Saturday where ESPN News isn't doing anything. Put these games on ESPN News so I can watch them, please. I I I, I want to watch. I want to be able to actually not pay to watch the quarterfinals. I shouldn't have to pay to watch the quarterfinals of playoffs, you know. But it is what it is. So, so South Dakota State. A lot of people are probably going to favor them to win this game, and you know, but do not discredit Villanova. Do not discredit them at all. Montana State and Sam Houston rounds out the night. It'll be the late game. And with Eric Schmidt, Casey Keeler, and this Cats team just looking to have, they're looking to have a better time than they did last week, which was, they, there was a lot of stress. And this one's not going to be stress-free. I'm sorry. Montana State is a team that is going to do a lot of damage if they can. And there were some rumors heading around the, the Piney Woods, you know, with Casey Killer potentially, you know, being rumored to become Delaware's new head coach, but Blue Hens hired uh, the OC Ryan Cardi, who was a Delaware quarterback from like 2002 to like 2006. Um, so that is some drama that's been going on behind the scenes for Sam Houston. Of course, we know that there's been like some reclassification and stuff like that with Division 1 so there, there's some things going on behind the scenes. I don't know what it all entails, but apparently there's like some changes that may be coming so Sam Houston also could be playing, you know, this could be it, their final season in the FCS, you know, like legitimately, like, like there's no transition period to move up or anything like that. They're just gonna go straight up, you know, with the whole Sunbelt rumors thing, so that's why I mentioned the Sun Belt Rivers thing. Um, the Bobcats, the Bobcats, we know they're, we know that's a damn good defense they got there with Ty Okada leading one of those guys leading the way. Um, I know I mentioned Trey Anderson last week, but Tommy Mellett is the quarterback now because Matthew McKay went to the transfer portal on Thursday of last week, or was it two weeks ago. Yeah, it was like about a week and a half or so ago in which 
McKay went to the transfer portal. And, you know, Tommy Mello, he, he really didn't do too well passing the ball, but he did run the ball. So that's great. You know, I think Montana State's going to have to rely on, you know, some defense here. We'll, we'll see. You know, they're going to have to contain Sam Houston because, I mean, again, they can sling it all over the field. You know, they can do a lot of things. They can run the ball very well. They can do. They can just do a lot of things. So we'll see, you know, what this game entails. So I'm hoping to find a way to watch this quarterfinal. I'm hoping to find a way to watch these other two quarterfinals because, I mean, these are going to be some damn good games, in all honesty, man. Like, I cannot wait for what these quarterfinals have entailed. And, I mean, the first two quarterfinals actually worked out perfectly, you know, for my schedule on Saturday. But the other two do not. So, we'll try and find a way. We always do here on Big Boy Sports. And, of course, Army-Navy, last FBS regular season game before the, you know, before we get to the bowls and stuff. Okay, Army-Navy, we, you know... That Army is going to the Armed Forces Bowl to take on Missouri. Navy will not be going bowling. They did win their last game. Navy did, however, against Temple. Beat Temple pretty easily. Army, since they last played, they beat Liberty pretty handily as well. So both these teams are coming in to this game with a lot of line. Army's trying to take, or rather retain, the CIC because they won it last year. They're trying to retain the CIC, you know, by beating Navy. And if they don't, it's going to be a tie. But I think Army retains either way if it was a tie. So, you know, it is what it is. What's pretty hilarious, though, is that last week, you know, Army kidnapped the wrong Navy goat. Um, so that that's pretty crazy. There's also a very terrible article about this game, uh, you can go find it. You know, when you search up Army, Na when you search up the Army Navy game, you'll find that article. It's a terrible article that I have no idea why it was written. Who, whoever wrote it, gotta be, gotta be ashamed of yourself. Like that's really damn disrespectful the way you wrote that, my guy. I, I forget, I, I really forgot who actually wrote it, but whoever wrote it, they get just a disrespectful article. You know, but whatever, man. That's just one article on, on the interweb. So, this Army-Navy game is going to have... We all know it's going to be low scoring. We all know there's going to be some physical defense here. You know, but what in the world are, are these two attacks like? We've seen Army on this channel. We've talked about Army as one of our featured games of the week. We talked about Navy as one of our featured games of the week as well. And that was during... That week where San Diego State played Air Force, Wake Forest played Army, and Cincinnati played Navy. So those three games during that week, I think it was like week six or seven or something like that. It, you know, Those games right there were three of my top games of the week. And in, in a week where that, I don't think there was a lot that happened technically, you know, as far as, you know, crazy things. I think, I think crazy things did indeed happen, but I mean, I, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, so for Army, the running attack has been pretty fierce. Christian Anderson leads the way at quarterback. There's also the backs, you know, the, these running backs of Terrell Robinson and Jacoby Buchanan. They've been very productive. Buchanan, I believe, leads, you know, the Army team in touchdowns and Robinson you know has been uh, I believe he leads the running backs in rushing yards I probably got got it wrong but I mean there's no thousand yard rusher for Army so that's that's kind of that's kind of why you know I get kind of mixed up but I mean both these guys have like what 20 touchdowns between them you know so gonna be very interesting for them army doesn't really pass the ball as much there have been a couple games where they haven't thrown a pass at all there when they do throw it's lethal um wake forest game is a good example although uh, although jabari laws was mostly the quarterback in that game uh, i'm not sure if he'll be playing i'm not sure they, they have been split time between him and christian anderson but we'll see i, I have no idea navy on the other hand they throw the ball a little bit more, maybe about like five to ten times a game. 
And so Ty Lavatai has been the quarterback for Navy for most of this year. There was at one point where Navy used like four different quarterbacks in the game, similar to how Clemson used four quarterbacks in the game. But there was a point where Navy had like four or five quarterbacks in the game, and Lavatai was the guy, you know, that close to that. Um, the guy that he could be throwing it to is Michael Cooper, captain, senior. You know, he'll be deployed to do whatever he is doing to serve our country afterwards. Um, I believe so, you know, after this. So, Lavatai, he's got to be on point when he throws the ball. Whoever he throws the ball to, you know, if it's not Michael Cooper, it's got to be one of these other Navy receivers that can step up. You know, whoever is going to get that ball has to step it up and make the play when it's time to make the play. And between the fullbacks of Isaac Ruas and Carlinos Ake, um, they, they've been running the ball pretty well, you know. And I hope I'm saying these names correctly because I usually say names completely wrong. But these backs have been putting up numbers the past couple weeks, so I'm intrigued to see how they play. You know, again, we know these defenses are going to be physical. We know this game is going to be low scoring. You know, the, the, what the over under was, what, 35? Might as well take the under. <laughs> well, I mean, remember last year was, what, 15 to nothing? So you got to take the under here. Take the under if you can. So with that being said, everybody, that is going to do it. Are you excited for the FCS quarterfinals? Are you excited for the Army Navy game? Um, it actually—I mean, again, my schedule works out perfectly. I can watch, I can watch these games. I can watch the basketball. I mean, it just works out so damn perfectly. Mm, mm, mm. What a good week, man! What a good week! I cannot wait for this week to happen. Um, again, I'll try and find a way. You know, hopefully, I can find a way to get these second round games these other second or rather not second round quarterfinal quarterfinal games you know we know the we know the semifinals and the fcs championship game will be televised on the espn but i mean on the actual espn networks but again it's just espn plus is a pain when you know there's certain networks that aren't being used for anything and yet espn refuses to put actual games on these networks it just doesn't make any sense to me Whatever. Whatever, man. Somebody's got to make some demands at, at these FCS offices, you know. Somebody's got to make some damn demands out here, man. So, that's going to do it. Again, what, what are your reactions as well to the Heisman? Who else do you think got snubbed? I wanted to put some other names on here that I thought got snubbed, but I ultimately decided not to. Because I, I mean, again, I knew that there were, I knew these three snubs were more snubbed than anything and then the coaching changes are wild as well i mean i noticed some other coaching changes but i wanted to get the make the two major ones out the way you know just to talk about them and um, i'll see you all on thursday where we talk about week 14 of the nfl season yeah i cannot wait to talk about it because i mean there's just a lot to talk about see you then everybody <laughs>